Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Would you like to sit down? So today is the third Sunday before Advent. I don't know about you, but Advent seems to have come round very quickly from last year to this year. So we've got three Sundays before we begin Advent. And today we hear in the Gospel of the first four disciples who listened to Jesus and responded to the invitation to follow me. So we'll think about what that can mean for us on our lives today. As we do each week, we begin by thinking to mind those things that have come between us and God this week. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are loving to all, and your mercy is over all your creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your faithful servants bless your name and speak of the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who is all forgiveness, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you like to stand while we sing God's praises? Poverty and pain shall end, that earth may know the peace of heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you like to sit down? We invite Judy to come and read our first reading for us. The first reading is from the book of Jonah, chapter 3. The word of the Lord came to Jonah for a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord.
of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Would you like to sit down? May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Words which we will sing in a few moments. But what a challenge those words are. Words. Some words that you hear can straight away give you a picture in your mind. I'm sure some of you here might remember the first ever Batman film made. Do you remember it? A colour action movie, slightly different to the movies today. There's one scene in the film where Batman and Robin are fighting off the man-eating shark. As they climb the ladder to escape the shark, the screen is filled with words like pow, Bang, zap, wham. Words which enable you to picture what is happening. Of course, there are many other words that are highlighted through the film, but the use of these words helps us to have a deeper understanding of what is happening. I'm going to give us three words to remember today. Belonging, believing, becoming. These three words play their part in the school next door in their mission statement. Three little words which mean so much. Belonging, believing, becoming. And the three words that are so relevant to today's gospel call. In today's gospel, Jesus finds four fishermen, two out fishing in their boats and two mending their nets with their father Zebedee. We hear of Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee. He looks at the fishermen and he says, follow me. In these words, Simon, Andrew, James and John are invited by Jesus to leave their boats behind and to follow him. Quite a drastic thing to do, letting go of all that you know. It's never easy and painless because the familiar is always more reassuring. We also heard about Jonah in the Old Testament, sent on a journey by God. But Jonah didn't want to go where God wanted him to go or do what God asked him to do. So he ran away, trying to hide away from God, a plan that was not going to succeed. So two people there, or six people there with a follow me moment, I wonder if you can remember a follow me moment. Sometimes a follow me moment of life can take us to places where we never want to go or to circumstances we don't want to face. Occasionally there's moments of inspirational. Sometimes the moments for everyone to see. Other times there are no moments just known to us and God. 
They can be as adventurous as leaving everything behind and starting in a new place, or as ordinary as going home to the family. Each of us, each of these moments, in whatever form they come, can take us more deeply into ourselves and more fully into our lives. Because the follow me moments of life are less about where we're going or what we're doing, they're more about who we are becoming. That day for Simon, Andrew, James and John began like any other day until Jesus arrived and invited them to follow him. We're told their response was immediate, no hesitation, no questions asked. I don't think that was because they had a greater courage than others or a prophetic knowledge. I think they simply followed Jesus immediately because Jesus made it possible for them to do so. An American priest and author called Barbara Brown Taylor wrote about this gospel story, saying that this story is all about God, not about us, because it illustrates God's ability not only to call us, but also to create us as people who can follow. She says that we follow because we can't take our eyes off the one who calls us, because the one who calls us interests us more than anything else in our lives. God knows what we hunger for, and God nourishes us. So can you remember a follow me moment? Five years ago for me, I made a huge decision. I think I can now call it a follow me moment. After many years as a primary school teacher, I gave it all up after ordination. I think like Jonah, I tried to hide, but I knew it was something I had to do, and here I am. At first, I sensed a great loss. Everything I was confident with, everything I knew, my whole life till then suddenly changed. I was no longer the teacher, Mrs. Mitchell. It took me a long time to realize that I didn't really leave my teaching behind. All the skills I'd acquired throughout my career are being used. They're beneficial to what I'm doing today. Listening, challenging, reaching out, nurturing, encouraging, guiding, to name but a few. Of course, the parts of school life that I do miss terribly, those things that I couldn't bring with me, the constant buzz of the classroom, the children's expressions as they played and explored and learned, and the giggles that were shared in the classroom and the staff room. But the follow me moment was ever present. Deep down, I knew I had to follow the call. And the same can be said about the fishermen. Jesus is inviting them to follow him, just as they are, with all their gifts and experience, to leave behind all that they've known, Throughout their years as fishermen, they've learnt patience, resilience and intuition. They've become aware of the need of attention, respect and humility. They know their own limitations. But most importantly, they've gained an understanding of what's at the heart of their trade. Not to take more than they need, and to care for and pay attention to the health of the environment, which nourishes them and their families. A follow me moment then invites us to let go, to leave behind, to walk away, just like what Simon, Andrew, James and John did, because we'll never get anywhere new unless we're willing to leave where we are. That means for us, letting go of our nets, getting out of our boats and walking away from Zebedee, to believe. Jesus called the fishermen and us to come together, to create church, to belong, to offer support and accountability to one another, to use our gifts in the wider world, gifts which could help all to see a more beautiful and peaceful world, a world where all are nourished. So our challenge today is are we able to drop our nets? Are we able to get out of the boat are we able to leave Zebedee? Are we willing to take that step into the kingdom, into the fullness of life, 
to be our truest and most authentic self because that's what I think God wants for every one of us to belong, to believe, to become. Jesus said to them and to us, follow me. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Amen. Would you like to stand while we affirm our faith as we say together the creed? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you like to sit down? Terry is going to lead us in our prayers this morning. Let us pray for the will God loves. Loving God, give to the church the spirit of true repentance, so that it may be fit to preach into the world and enable your flock to follow you faithfully and draw others to faith. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, come into our towns and cities and to the crowded places where people live with stress and help take away their anxieties to live stress-free and peaceful lives. Lord, in your mercy. Remember we follow together in Christ with the ministry of those who lead us in worship. And let us pray for those who lead us in worship with David our Bishop and our area bishops and Angie and Alison here at St. Elizabeth's. Lord, in your mercy. In our daily work, let us know you are with us to guide us and ready to hear your call and bless those we work with and show them your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Healing God who helps heal all kinds of sickness and disease. May his healing power help now the sick and injured. We pray for those known to us who are sick and suffering. We remember all those who are still suffering the effects of COVID. We remember especially those who have asked for our prayers in, in hospital, Gladys Burton, baby James Eastwood, and Marion's friend Steve. And also, 
being cared for at home, Andrew Plunkett, Stephen McGree, Richard Shaw, Dorothy Jessup, Frank Stanton, Vernon Mitchell, Rebecca Hughes, Claire Nibel, baby Eloise Lawson, Sheila Rothwell, Ian Allen, John Steenson, Janice Neary, Lizzie Spear, Ken Cotton, Colin Thompson, Val Aldred, Sandy Spurgeon, and Miriam Lomas. Strengthen all those who work to heal the sick. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the lonely of lost families they once knew and have mercy on the departed from whom Christ suffered that they might live forever. And we remember those who have died recently and also those who remember their anniversary come this following week. Dora Diel, Thomas Rayner, Thomas Leslie Rayner, Eric Mann, Frank Stockton, Cicely Morley, Ken Shield, Francis Petra, Florrie Lewis, and Linda Porter. Grant them a safe harbour and peace that cannot be broken. Rest eternal granted to them, O Lord. Petra will shine upon them. We pray with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Elizabeth, Saint Agnes, and all your saints, to the joy of your eternal kingdom. And in a moment of silence, we offer you our own prayers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. like to stand. To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. In a virtual way online, and we can all offer peace to everyone online. The camera is at the back, so please all turn around at some point or give a wave. And in a physically distanced way in church, let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is always right to give you thanks. God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. Holy, holy, holy. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. Holy, holy, holy. You send your spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and sing. body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. Jesus Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour your spirit on us, that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus, as we wait for his coming in glory. For honour 
and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together with confidence in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us say the post-communion prayer together. God of peace, whose Son, Jesus Christ, proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world and by your healing power make whole both people and nations through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So the announcements, they are all on your sheet in the back of your booklet. If you fancy coming this afternoon to Messy Church, which I am sure it will be an exciting afternoon, we're going to finish with sparklers, so it should be nice. We have a little meal, we have a store there, we do some crafts. Please come, it's one pound a person. Tomorrow, Tox is on and yoga. Tuesday is our Eucharist at 9.30, followed by the place of welcome, tea, coffee, toast and a chat. It's good to come, isn't it, Mel and Stefan? Yeah, we have fun. We have a giggle as well sometimes, don't we? Yeah. On Thursday, there is Smile, £3 payment contactless. Next Sunday is Remembrance Sunday. And in our service, we will have the two-minute silence. Tony will... Tune into the radio broadcast as usual, and then afterwards there is the informal procession from St Mary's Church to the Cenotaph and Willow Grove. The roads are not being closed this year, there's no brass band this year, I think it's just a very informal walk from the church to the Cenotaph to the Cenotaph. If you want to go, please arrive there for 12.15. And next Sunday is Youth Group at four o'clock here in church. So they are all the messages on there. We are trying to get ourselves up to date with all our paperwork so anybody who comes in the next few weeks will have to sign the consent to be on camera which you might all have been today we don't know and the income survey which we should have done last month but we're doing it this week and next week and then we can hand those in. So thank you for doing those today. We have our thank yous. I'm going to start with Steve, because I usually forget Steve. But I'm going to say thank you, Steve. It's good to have you and Joan both back after both being poorly with COVID. But they're both back, both looking very well. And he's done a good job this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony, who spent two whole days. He had Friday off work, but spent Friday in here all day setting up the new camera, getting rid of the bit here, moving the cabinet over there so that it can be shown in a different way. So if you get a chance, have a look at it and see how it's gone. Has it gone okay? Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Susie, Shelley, and all the choir. You've sounded really good this morning. Thank you, Richard, on the organ. Judy and Terry, Judy for reading, and Terry for your prayers. Thank you to Brian and Linda at the back who had a lot to do this morning and for Kate for helping out there. You've done a brilliant job. And Kate's holding up an envelope at me, so I think this means Christmas raffle. Shall I come and get it? They're all going to get a pack as they leave. So as you leave church today, you will get a pack of envelopes for the Christmas raffle which Noreen is going to set up at the back at some point this week and as much money as we can get as many donations would be great because that's our only fundraising before Christmas thank you any more notices no okay birthdays Ken Cotton it was his birthday yesterday and Ken was 83 He's doing very well at the moment, gaining his strength each day because he's not been well. So we wish Ken a very happy birthday. And it's also Fiona's birthday. Fiona, mum to Harry. And Jess, it's her birthday this week. So, are we going to blast out happy birthday to Ken and Fiona?
hope they both have had brilliant birthdays. So we have our final hymn to sing. We have a gospel to proclaim. Would you like to stand? Where your love and footsteps, footsteps show, thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Keep those words in your heart this week as you journey on. So I offer you God's blessing. Loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers and our songs, for feeding us with your word and yourself, and encouraging us in our worship together. Take us and use us to love and serve you and all people in the power of your spirit and in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.